Clear Ballot supports three models of Fujitsu scanners. The 6800 handles documents up to 22 inches in length and scans 108 and a half by 11 pages per minute. The 6670 handles documents up to 22 inches in length and scans 78 and a half by 11 pages per minute. The 6140 is the most affordable scanner supported by ClearBallot. It handles documents up to 18 inches in length and scans 30 8 and a half by 11 pages per minute. Each scanner must be connected to its own laptop computer, running Windows 7 or Windows 8. The laptop must have USB 2.0 or higher. A gigabit router is required to connect the scan stations to the scan server. You'll also need enough Ethernet cables to connect the scan stations and the scan server to the router. In addition to the required components, you might also choose to use a paper jogger to square up the edges of the ballots to avoid paper jams. A scan station consists of a scanner, a laptop computer, and associated cables. Sufficient space should be provided for the equipment and for inbound and outbound ballots. A minimum of six feet is recommended. The scan server station consists of a laptop, a router, and their associated cables. The ballot should be jogged before scanning. A properly jogged stack of ballots is much less likely to jam or misfeed. This is done at the prep jogging station, which typically uses a surface of six feet by three feet. The ballot handling station is where ballot boxes are unsealed and resealed, if required, and where ballots are staged for the prep jogging station. Here's an example of a layout of a scanning operation, assuming three scan stations, one scan server station, one jog station, and a ballot prep station. All three scan stations are connected to the router via Ethernet cables. Okay. The whole process begins here, where the ballot boxes are unsealed and resealed, if required, and ballots are staged for jogging. Any required ballot box record keeping occurs here. Next, target cards and box labels are assigned. Find the box ID on the target card. Let's say it's ED-003. Affix a label with that same box ID, ED-003, to the box of ballots. Then put the target page in the box. As each ballot is scanned, each image created is given a unique image ID that is created from the box ID on the target page in the sequence number of the image in the scan. As a result, if the ballots are kept in order after scanning, each image can be traced back to a specific ballot within the box. The system will automatically produce a report detailing scanning operation of each box ID. The connection between the scan stations and the scan server should always be via an Ethernet cable. All scanners require a power cord and a USB cable, which will connect to the scan station laptop. After plugging in the 6800 or 6670, make sure that the main power switch is turned on. The last step is to connect the laptop to the scan server. Place one end of the Ethernet cable into the network port of the laptop and the other end into the network switch. The laptop must be attached to a power supply. Once all the cables are connected, turn on the scanners in the laptops. In the front of the scanner, pull the gray lever down. Now the automatic document feeder is in the down position 
and can properly guide ballots through the scanner. Adjust the wings of the tray to accommodate the ballots to be scanned. Wings that are too tight can result in distorted images. Wings that are too loose can increase the risk of multi-feeds and jams. For longer ballots, extend the input and output trays to accommodate the longer ballot lengths. If the ballots are still longer than the input or output trays, then stability can be maintained using plastic extensions, which slot in easily over the top of the input and output trays. On the Windows Start menu, click on Devices and Printers. Here it is, listed by name and model. Right-click on the scanner and select Properties. Select the Events tab. In the Actions box, select Start this program and choose Scandal Pro. If the scanner is not listed, check to make sure that the scanner is properly connected and turned on. If it is not displaying properly, contact an administrator. From the desktop, run the update script that corresponds to the scanner being used. If a 6800 is being used, select Update 6800 if the ballot is less than 18 inches long. Select Update 6800-18-22 if the ballot is between 18 and 22 inches long. Open Scandal Pro. From the Tool menu, select the Event tab and make sure that the scan event is set to the same profile. Before scanning any ballots, double-click the Start Tabulator icon on the ScanStation desktop. Check the status bar to see that the name of the current election, the model, and serial number of the scanner attached to the ScanStation laptop and the name of the laptop appear correctly. If any of this information is missing or incorrect, quit Tabulator. If the election name is incorrect, an election administrator can use the administration panel to ensure that the correct election is being used. If the scanner model or serial number is missing or incorrect, run the proper update script again. Place the target page on the input tray. Face up for the 6800, face down for the 6670, face down for the 6140. Hit the Scan button to scan the target page. The first scan of every batch is always a target page. The target page ID identifies the images for each batch scan of ballots. Tabulator gives an alert message when it recognizes a target page. After the target card is scanned, make sure that the current box ID in the scanning column matches the target card. Insert a stack of ballots on the input tray. Because both sides of the ballot are being scanned, the orientation of the ballots does not matter. After the target page is scanned, a message box prompts you to click Yes to continue scanning. It is important to preserve the order of the ballots as they come off the scanner. Place them face down in the box with the target page on the bottom. If the ballots become out of order, either rescan the box or indicate this by checking the box on the label. Continue to scan the rest of the ballots in the box. Initial the box label to indicate that the box has been scanned. If the ballots become out of order, either rescan the box or indicate this by checking the box on the label. When a box has been finished and you do not wish to scan additional ballots into the box, click No when the Continue Scanning prompt appears on the screen. This indicates that you plan to start a new box and that the scanner should no longer assign ballot ID numbers in the same sequence as the completed box. Instead, the next set of ballots will take their identity from the target card, which is associated with their own box. Tabulator shows its progress as it processes the ballots. While Tabulator still displays numbers in the total ballots queued to be done and time to completion rows, it is still processing ballots and should not be shut down. Once Tabulator has completed analyzing and saving all of the ballots, Tabulator will show zeros in the total ballots queued to be done row and dashes in the time to completion row. At this point, 
Tabulator can safely be closed by clicking the X in the top right corner of the tabulator window. Shut down the laptop or put it to sleep if scanning will resume later. Then turn off the scanner. Cleaning the scanners is an essential end of day routine. Consult the scanner user manual for detailed cleaning instructions. Make sure to dry scanner optics thoroughly after cleaning. Moisture on the optics can result in blurry scans. On the 6800, multi-feeds are caused when the scanner detects multiple pieces of paper going through the scanner at once. When a multi-feed is detected, the scanner will display the two images that it captured for that scan and will trap the offending pieces of paper before they are fully ejected into the output tray. It is important to examine the images on the screen and the number of sheets of paper captured at the top of the scanner to determine if a multi-feed occurred. If the images on the screen show multiple ballots, or if there is more than one page sticking out of the top of the scanner, then those pages need to be rescanned. Gather the pages in question, click Rescan, and then reinsert those pages into the input tray to be scanned. The most common multi-feed is a false positive. The scanner will report a multi-feed. A single ballot will be sticking out of the top of the scanner, and the images on the computer screen will only show a single ballot. If you are certain that only one ballot was scanned, press OK to keep the images of the ballot that was scanned. Sometimes, the images on the screen will show multiple ballots, but there will be fewer ballots protruding from the top cover of the scanner. This means that one or more of the ballots was fully ejected from the top cover. Gather all of the questionable ballots and rescan them. As always, when in doubt, rescan the box. Occasionally, this message appears because the scanner does not detect what's in the input tray. This happens when the paper or ballots are improperly covering the sensors on the inner edge of the tray. Push the paper further into the input tray. If the paper is bent or curled, hold down the interior edge of the paper while clicking the retry button to start the scan. Once the scan begins, you shouldn't have to hold down the paper. A focus scanner operator can achieve maximum throughput for the 6140 by inserting an additional stack of 15 to 20 ballots as the scanner pulls through the last ballot of its current stack. The scanner will detect the new ballots and will continue to scan rather than stopping the scan and awaiting a prompt from the scan station laptop. When inserting an additional stack, it is important not to jostle the ballot that is being pulled through the scanner, as this can cause a paper jam or multi-feed. Additionally, when performing a continuous feed, it is important to clear ballots from the output tray to prevent the ballots from getting out of order. A focus scanner operator can achieve maximum throughput for the 6670 by inserting an additional stack of ballots on top of the ballots already present on the input tray. By carefully placing an additional stack of ballots, the 6670 will continue to operate and not provide a prompt to continue scanning. When inserting additional ballots, it is important not to place too many on the input tray as this can cause a multi-feed or a paper jam. Additionally, when performing a continuous feed, it is important to clear ballots from the output tray to prevent the ballots from getting out of order. When it becomes necessary to redo a box, close tabulator and select the Delete Box script. The script will prompt for the name of the box to be deleted. Type the exact case-sensitive name of the box that needs to be deleted into the prompt, and then press Enter to delete the images of that box on both the scan station and the scan server, as well as the records in the database for that box. This will allow for the box to be scanned and processed again. It is important for Delete Box to always be run on the scan station that was used to scan the box initially to ensure that all vestigial files are removed from that scan station as well as the scan server.
Delete box will not affect files on other scan stations. Once a box has been deleted, it must be scanned again. There is no way to undo the actions of delete box. On the 6800, multi feeds are caused when the scanner detects multiple pieces of paper going through the scanner at once. When a multi feed is detected, the scanner will display the two images that it captured for that scan and will trap the offending pieces of paper before they are fully ejected into the output tray. It is important to examine the images on the screen and the number of sheets of paper captured at the top of the scanner to determine if a multi-feed occurred. If the images on the screen show multiple ballots, or if there is more than one page sticking out of the top of the scanner, then those pages need to be rescanned. Gather the pages in question, click Rescan, and then reinsert those pages into the input tray to be scanned. Occasionally, this message appears because the scanner does not detect what's in the input tray. This happens when the paper or ballots are improperly covering the sensors on the inner edge of the tray. Push the paper further into the input tray. If the paper is bent or curled, hold down the interior edge of the paper while clicking the retry button to start the scan. Once the scan begins, you shouldn't have to hold down the paper. If you receive a message indicating that the cover to the scanner is open, this indicates that the scanner was not properly closed following its last cleaning or the last time that a paper jam was cleared. This error causes the scanner to stop the current scan and lose the identity of the target card. If you are in the middle of a box, that box must be deleted and rescanned, or an additional target card and label must be used for the remainder of the box. Remember, when in doubt, we scan the box. This is a message indicating that a pick roller error has been detected. This error causes the scanner to stop the current scan and lose the identity of the target card. If you are in the middle of a box, that box must be deleted and rescanned, or an additional target card and label must be used for the remainder of the box. Check to ensure that the gray ADF or automatic document feeder lever is in the down position. Press down on the gray lever to deploy the ADF and then begin the scan again. When tabulator is started, if it detects improperly named files which contain the name separator instead of a box ID number, it will delete them. Such files are created when ballots are accidentally scanned without a target page, or when ballots are scanned following the loss of the target page identity. When Tabulator displays this warning, it means that Tabulator is having trouble communicating with the server. Ensure that the network connections between the scan station and the scan server are functioning correctly, and that the scan server has not shut down. This message occurs when a target card is used for a voter group that was not part of the election definition loaded into the database. Close tabulator, delete the box, open tabulator, and use a target card and label from a valid voter group. If a ballot is scanned without a target page, or if the target page is scanned improperly, the resulting file will begin with the name separator. Tabulator will display a red warning message and will cease to function. Close tabulator and then restart it. Tabulator will delete the improperly named files after it is restarted. Make sure that the target page is scanned properly and then continue scanning ballots. When in doubt, delete the box and rescan.